Ooh, I look so freaking crusty. Ooh, girl, hold up. Let me... Welcome back to my channel for another story time. Happy Friday. I hope you guys are excited for the weekend. I know I am one in a white because my birthday is this weekend. Okay, Aquarius gang, the coldest month of the year gang, the snow outside during your birthday gang. <laughs> No, but I actually really am excited. I have a, a video coming out for you guys about like what I'm gonna be wearing, what we're gonna be doing for my birthday and all of that. So make sure you guys are here for that. I am so unbelievably excited for today's video. We got a lot to talk about, a lot of cheese man. But also, for those of you guys that don't know, you missed it, girl. I went ahead and announced the giveaway and had you guys enter. Today, we are going to be announcing the winner. So like I said, we will be having three winners. So make sure you guys are here until the end of the video so you find out whether or not you won. So many of y'all entered I'm surprised I'm not like this okay because like I was just like typing everyone's name into this random name picker and y'all it was like so many of you guys that entered I love y'all so much thank you guys so much for being such amazing ride or dies for me I really appreciate it speaking of ride or dies most of y'all know but if you don't know I appreciate y'all so much and I love giving my glamazons a shout out and some love during the beginning of every one of my videos so that's what we're gonna do I do toggle between Twitter and Instagram here are my handles here if you are not following what you doing with your life make sure you follow me but if you would like your chance to be featured in my next video as my glamazon shot of the day so everybody can see you and your beautiful face and your beautiful glamazon shot um, make sure you tag me and of course use your hashtag glamazon shot so that I can find it so today we're actually gonna be going through Twitter because last time we did go through Instagram we want to make it fair while I'm looking this up did you guys watch the Super Bowl halftime I didn't care about the game I was watching during the halftime show and y'all Shakira and JLo killed it like I don't care what any of y'all say I feel like I had the most fun watching that halftime show than any other halftime show ever ever don't at me everyone say hey what's up to our glamazon monique you can find her at monique omankoy Oh my koi, I hope I'm not, I'm probably butchering that so much. I'm sorry, girl. But she said, I've been a fan of you for nearly four years. I love your videos and how you always keep it real. Thank you so much, Monique. All of your love and support is so much appreciated. It does not go unnoticed. Thank you so much for being one of my writer dies. You guys know that I would not be here without you and I could not do this without each and every one of you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now let's get into today's story time. Let's get ready together because I'm looking a little bit dead right now and we need to fix that, girl. Oh no, the discoloration of it all. Grab your wine, grab your snacks, girl, because it's story time. All right, so today's story is actually, look, okay, I'm going to preface this by saying I never pull this card, okay? What we're about to discuss today is something that I hardly ever talk about because I just, I don't know, it just makes me uncomfortable. And I never want to assume that people are genuinely like this or that's what they meant to say. Or I want to give people the benefit of the doubt when something like this comes up and it could be misconstrued. I'm always the one that's like, mm, but does she mean it like that though? And I'm sure y'all are lost right now. Everything's gonna make sense. But I just wanna preface this video by saying this. So um, the fact that this is even a story on my end and the fact that like it kind of hit me the wrong way is pretty rare because I never wanna go down this road. I never wanna pull that card. It's just ugly. I don't like it. It makes me feel all kinds of gross inside so I had to be feeling some type of way for me to be even discussing this okay this story takes place I want to say I would say probably like a year and a half maybe yeah about a year and a half before I started doing YouTube full-time okay so most of y'all know that back in the day I was constantly going back and forth between like what am I doing with my life you know like that constant question like where am I supposed to be what am I supposed to be doing because time is of the essence and you just feel like if you're not making the right decision right now that you're like being stupid and like I was stressing about that all the time I was constantly going back and forth about what I should be doing my life and everything so at this time I was going through that girl and I was like trying to figure out you know what's the smartest move for me and you know what I should be doing instinctually like everyone else I feel like you guys could probably relate to this the minute that you get out of high school it's like so much pressure and instinctually your first thought is 
go to college you need to go to school um and get your degree and get your education and i was so big on that and because you know i was out on my own really soon and i had bills and stuff i always put school on the back burner because i had bills but it never left my heart i wanted to go back to school i didn't have the money for it though so it was just really complicated right i started saving money and the reason why i was doing that was because i was trying to like plan and have a nest egg in place for when i went back to school so that way i still had money for my bills and i wasn't like so tight on money because i was gonna have to go from a full-time job to a part-time job and like the coin ain't the same girl y'all look at what i'm gonna be using today yes girl the conspiracy palette yes saved up my little coin right and i decided to quit my full-time job which was so nerve-wracking for me because i was like girl this is a great full-time job y'all had benefits and everything but i just felt like i knew that they were not going to promote me and like anytime i wanted to get promoted they were like oh well you have to have this degree in order to get promoted so i was like hold up like you expect me to stay in this position forever because i can't go back to school because i got bills um no so i was like you know what if i want to you know excel and get promoted and be taken seriously i need to go back to school i immediately went into the task of finding a part-time job and i've said this before finding a part-time job can actually be more difficult than finding a full-time job because of your restrictions like your schedule restrictions whether you know you need to make time for your classes and you can only work nights and weekends or whatever so i had specific limitations as well because because I was getting ready to go back to school. So at this time, I still hadn't like gotten my official schedule for school yet. So I knew that I needed a part-time job. I just didn't know the exact hours and days and stuff as of yet. But my plan was to go ahead and like start looking for a part-time job as time goes on that I will notify them about later. So, but like your girl needs money now, you know what I'm saying? So back then I had a few different ways of finding jobs. And for those of you guys that have been asking for like my corporate world experience, experience type of videos like you know how to do well in an interview and what to put on your resume and all that girl I got you I was just waiting for me to not be pregnant because I also want to give you guys tips on like my go-to interview outfit and like your nails your hair honestly like things that I picked up from HR directors and like people that are in human resources that look out for this I feel like I could really give you the tea girl and give you like the full scope so that you can go in your best self so don't worry that's coming so I went a different route a route that I used usually did not go and that was craigslist would i recommend that nowadays no girl okay like there are some scary creepy weird ass people out there and you just never know but back then you know finding a job on craigslist like a legit position well, you know wasn't unheard of you know administrative work i'm not trying to do like any labor intensive work i don't work in the food industry like that's not my background so that made it even harder right one day i came across this post and it was for a job that was actually down it wasn't downtown it was like in the cherry creek area if you guys know anything about denver or the areas around it there's cherry creek now cherry creek girl is like the the bougie part of town like rich ass people live in cherry creek okay like cherry creek is that one all right so i see this posting for a job in cherry creek and i'm like oh bushy okay like yes girl what i remember about the job post was it was like a regular admin position but it was going to be answering phone it was not cold calling because i'm not about that life but it was like basically being a receptionist and so i was like oh yeah i could do that with my eyes closed they had a very open-ended post like it wasn't like hey we need somebody part-time on these days at these times it was just like hey we have a few part-time openings available you know if you're looking for part-time work give us a call whatever right so i jumped on it you guys and i responded to the email and i sent them my resume but also a big thing that i always did to like stand out from the crowd because like i was just really impatient they included their address in the posting right so i got their address and the next day you guys i drove down there at 8 a.m like the minute that they opened so i go in there and there are two young girls they were probably about my age maybe a little older at the front desk and so you know i walk in and they look so confused and they're like hey you know are you meeting someone here and i was like no so i let them know my name and i was like you know i saw um a posting for a position available that's part-time on craigslist and i was just here to inquire about that like i sent in my resume but i was hoping you know if available if i could speak 
to the HR manager or whatever. Oh, oh yeah, the job posting, yes, yes. They seemed so excited. They were like, oh my God, yes, okay, perfect. Like, go ahead and take a seat. We'll let our HR manager know that you're here. So I was like, okay, cool. So I sit down in the little waiting area. At first glance, this place was kind of weird because I was used to working in like bigger corporate offices and this was a smaller office and like, the waiting area was right in front of like the front desk, you know, but right behind the front desk was almost like, they call it a bullpen, which is like, it's a square and there are a bunch of cubicles in there, right? So there were probably about like six or eight cubicles in there and there were other girls working back there and they were like on the phone and they all had, all of them had headsets on and they're like, while I was waiting, I could hear them answering the phone. They usually have like the same greeting, like, you know, thank you for calling this company's name. This is so-and-so, how can I help you? And it's like the same thing every time. They were not saying the same thing every time they answered the phone. Like, Hi, thank you for calling blank and blank legal. You know, this is so-and-so, how may I help you? And then the other one would answer the phone and be like, thank you for calling, you know, Edgar's Plumbing Service. How can I help you? And then another one was like, hey, thank you for calling, you know, blah, 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 HVAC. And it was basically, it was just like different companies like that they were answering the phones for and like that was just me sitting there in that moment I realized that they were all answering the phones differently and I was like this is weird you guys not even like two minutes it was very very fast and this tall blonde lady comes from the back and she's probably like in her mid 30s so she comes from the back and she stops at the front desk where the two girls are you know she kind of like leans down to talk to one of them and one of them kind of like gestures to me and she's like oh yeah you know she's here to see you or whatever the minute that she looked up at me you guys her face just like lit up like she had known me forever and she was like oh my god hi hi are you nikki and i was like yeah you know my name is nikki i'm here you know i saw your post on craigslist and like i didn't even have to really explain she was like oh my god that's so great i'm so happy to have you here you know come on back i would love to ask you a few questions and i was like okay great so you know everything was good vibes y'all i was like yes like this is just fitting in real well like I just felt like this was gonna be a great fit all the girls there were around my age and you know this HR manager seemed really nice not even exaggerating she probably asked me like two or three questions about my previous experience and like the other companies that I worked for and that's about it it was one of the easiest interviews that I had ever had she was speaking as though I was already hired and she like that's what you have to listen for that's how you'll know if you have the job it's like how they're talking to you and so she was like I just feel like you're gonna love it here I think you'll, you're just gonna be a great fit to get along with the other girls and you know this is gonna be easy peasy for you so she was like talking like your girl was already hired and I was like yes you already know like I had no doubt in my mind that I had this job she told the HR manager I was like hey let's name her we're gonna name her Linda I was like you know I don't know exactly like what days and times yet like I know like it's gonna be around this window but I don't have my final schedule yet but as soon as I have it I'll give it to you and maybe we can work around it and she was like yes that's fine like that's perfect so the way it was gonna work was there was a girl already up at the front and her name was like Mary Lou or Mary it was like one of those two names and one like Mary Jane <laughs> or Mary Lou or something like that we'll call her Mary Lou so one of the receptionists Mary Lou she was up at the front already and basically Basically, she was going back to school as well but she already like had all of her information and so she could work from 8 until like noon and then I could work from like noon until 4 30 so I was gonna be relieving her pretty much I left there with the job okay I was not playing so she was gonna have me come in the very next day to start my training like this okay her semester did not start for like another week week and a half so I was coming in at 8 and leaving at like noon so I was still working part-time but she was still there you know because she wasn't going back to school just yet so I went in the next day at like 8 so that I could start my training and they had me sit next to her and you know basically just watch her and you know y'all know training let me explain explain like what this place was so you guys know how I was saying that they were answering the phones oh that's pretty look at that color yes that's just a theory oh it's so pretty basically y'all there were like companies that worked a lot of them worked remotely like plumbing companies HVAC companies trash companies stuff like that 
where they didn't really have like a headquarters or a head office they did everything you know mobily so companies like that couldn't really have like a true receptionist but they still needed somebody to like answer phones and set appointments and stuff so that's where this company that i was at would come in basically they were like almost like dispatchers they had a bunch of companies that they worked with and we were the receptionists for all of them does that make sense so any call that you got it would like come up on our computer screen like what number was dialed whether that person was trying to dial the plumbing company or whatever company so you looked at that and then you knew how to answer the phone i did not know that anything like this existed but i guess it makes sense i was getting along pretty well with the girls like everybody seemed really nice and everything was working out just fine y'all know things can't always stay like that i don't know why i just have like please bring me drama written on my forehead okay <laughs> what was her name we'll name her like candace okay so candace was the other receptionist so when i started coming in from my own shift like alone after my training had ended Candace and I, of course, you know, started talking because we were the only ones up there at the front. And, you know, she was like, you know, the other receptionist. Now, she worked full time. She was really cool. She was really quiet and she was very conservative. She had an old soul, you know, she was one of them. She was very sweet. And then I started getting to know the girls that were like in the bullpen behind us, right? So there were one, two, three, four. There were like four other girls back there and they were all really cool and we would all talk and just shoot the shit and everything was all good right there was a girl that was in the bullpen and she was like kind of like a hippie she was like very carefree she had beautiful wavy hair she had like this bohemian style real cute one day came around and that girl like the one with the bohemian style she had to go she got up and she went to our break room and in order to get there she had to like walk up to where our desk was and then make a hard left so she would come like right up behind me and candace right and then she would have to make a hard left to go into our break room you know she got whatever i don't even remember what she got and then she came back out and i was sitting there you know the phones weren't ringing we were just kind of chilling it was like towards the end of the day i like looked down at my phone really fast and i don't know if i was checking the time or what but like my lock screen came up and of course on my lock screen i have a photo of david and julian because you know those are my hearts right she walked past she just so happened to see that photo and she stopped and she goes oh my god is that your little boy and i was like oh yeah you know that's my son julian and she sat there and, you know she's looking at the picture and she was like oh my god he's so cute sitting there looking at the picture and she goes so is this like your oldest what i was like i don't that's it like that's the only kid i have no way really yeah and like keep in mind you guys i was like 22 at this time maybe i was so caught off guard by that i was like did i ever like insinuate that i had more kids like what and you guys she just seemed so shocked and she was like no way like he's your only one and i was like yeah so she starts making her way back to her desk and she was like oh my god i was expecting you to say like three or four wait did she just she thought that i had like three or four kids like why would she was like oh my god that's so crazy i don't know why i thought that bitch me neither like so that happens right and the next thing that kind of struck me as odd was a friend of mine had texted me she was trying to start her own jewelry company and i was super proud of her and she had like been looking into vendors and like she put in so much work into her jewelry line and she named it after her daughter i remember at this time she was about to like launch her jewelry website well on this day i had gotten a text from said friend and she was telling me like the specifics of when her website was gonna go live and like got really excited and i was like oh my god because like i had been hearing about it for months she had been telling me you know all of the whole process of it was just really strenuous and she had just been working really hard on it so i knew so this was like a huge moment you know and i was like super excited i was like oh my god yes you know so i like had that reaction and the girls were like what and i was like oh my god one of my friends you know she has just been working so hard and finally you know her dream's gonna come true i was like she just told me that she's starting her business today and i'm so excited for her and the girl next to me candace she was like oh well what is she selling like what's the business and before i could even answer one of the girls behind me in the bullpen i'm not even gonna give her a name she straight up she's like let me guess she wants to sell tamales 
Bitch, what? First of all, I don't know what a tamale is. I know what a tamale is, but like, look here, homie. It ain't even near Christmas, okay? What you talking about? I was so confused, and I'm not gonna lie. It really did rub me the wrong way. I was like, bitch, you think you're funny? but you're not. They all started cracking up. They thought it was like the funniest shit ever. And I was like, I am so confused. Like, I don't know why this shit's so funny. Why would you think that my friend is selling tamales? Like, okay, like, so because they were all laughing, it made me feel like I would have seemed like I was overreacting had I been like, bitch, what? Like, what you mean? Like, what you mean by that, you know? I was like, no, not tamales, but jewelry. Like, she has an amazing jewelry line, and I'm just so proud of her. So I just kind of skipped over it because I just felt like it was really ignorant. I didn't find it funny and let them know, like, my girl's really doing some big things. Like, whatever, you know? Red flag number two. And then it was, like, other little things. Like, one time there was um, a girl that came in. We also offered, like, the conference rooms that we had in there. You could rent them out. Out. so she was renting out a conference room that day and so she came in she checked her mail she was just kind of hanging around the office because she had a few meetings that she had booked the conference rooms for keep in mind I'd never met this lady in my life she was just somebody that came and you know rented out a conference room every now and then and like had her mailbox here you know it's like around lunchtime and she heats up like soup or something like that in the microwave she left it in there for too long and it started popping everywhere and when that happens the soup or whatever gets everywhere and it was like soup but I think it was like tomato based I just remember there was like red everywhere so it had, it had popped it made a huge ass mess because she kept it in there she like put it in there and then walked away so when it was popping she didn't hear it so she didn't take it out right away so by the time she went back to the microwave everything that had popped onto like the walls in the microwave like dried and got cooked pretty much onto the sides you know so you have to really rub to get it off to clean the microwave right anyways that happens she comes to get her food and she sees that there's a mess i heard her she was like oh shit and like you know she takes out her bowl and everything got quiet like i didn't really hear her and then all of a sudden you know this lady comes out into the main area to where we're sitting and she like looks around and she was like does anybody know how to get this red off of the microwave like i made a huge mess i accidentally put it in there for too long i'm just kind of sitting there and i was like on my computer so i didn't really pay attention because like girl it ain't rocket science you just wipe it down you know so she asks that and like she doesn't even wait a heartbeat she like immediately looks at me and she was like maybe you can give me a few pointers This lady for real looked at me. She said, you know, deep cleaning. You guys are always so good at deep cleaning. What you mean? Straight up, what do you mean you guys? Who else? Me and her? Me and her? All of us combined? Who are you talking about? Why are you coming at me asking me how to clean out a damn microwave and how to deep clean? Like, I don't know, bitch. Like, go in there and wipe it down with some soap and water. It's not that hard. Like, there ain't nothing that I know that you don't know, bitch. Like... Y'all, I was so, cause like, again, I did not know this lady. And I was like, I know you are not sitting up here insinuating <laughs> that she could just be stereotyping. But you know, I don't like going there cause that's ugly. And I don't want to assume that someone's being ugly. One of the girls in the bullpen, she was like, oh, I'll help you. And she got up and she went over there and helped her. And I was like, good for you. Cause I'm not going in there and doing that. Like it just rubbed me the wrong fucking way. Now this last part really makes me mad. It seems really petty, but it's not. It's the principle of the thing, okay? So fast forward and it was around Halloween. The girls start talking about how they wanna dress up at the office because we weren't gonna have any outside guests coming in. So it was gonna be fine. You know, this sounded like fun. And I was like, yes, you know, I would love to dress up or whatever. So we start brainstorming like, what could we all dress up as, as an office? What could we do together that would be really great and really funny? As per usual, Orange is the New Black was huge, okay? So everybody had been watching Orange is the New Black. And so when we were brainstorming, you know, we had a few different ideas and we decided that we wanted to be cast members of Orange is the New Black. Everyone starts picking out who they want to be, you know, in, in the show. So of course, immediately I was like, yes, I either want to be, it was between Flaca and Maritza, okay? Like, I love them so much. So, you know, I'm like saying that, and I'm like, you know, I, I really want to be like one of these two, but I just can't decide. And the girl next to me, Candace, she was like, actually, she was like, I have this wig that looks exactly like Flaca's hair. She was like, can I be Flaca? And I was like, 
oh yeah, sure girl. Yes girl, you be Flaca, and I'll be Maritza and we'll be like besties, you know, like just like in the show. And I was like so excited and I was like, yes, because I could totally channel me some Maritza, okay? I just loved her, I thought she was so funny. That girl, Mary Jo, the one that I had been like relieving, at this time she had, she was like getting ready to leave, but she was still there because we were all planning this together. So she wanted to be in on it too. And she was about to leave. And so, you know, me and Candace are having this conversation. She makes the decision that she wants to be Flaca. So I'm like, yes, I'll be Maritza. We'll be besties or whatever. This is gonna be perfect. And all of a sudden, Mary Lou, Mary Jo, whatever the hell I named her, she was like, no, 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 don't be Maritza. She was like, you know who you would be perfect as, Nikki? And I was like, who? Dianara. Yeah, but like not the regular Dianara, the pregnant one. She was like, when she gets pregnant, she's all big. She was like, oh my God, you would be so perfect for that but I don't want to be Dianara. I was like, I don't know, I just really like Maritza and I just feel like that would be perfect considering the fact that Candace is gonna be Flaca and we'll be up here together. Like, it just made more sense that I would be Maritza. So like, why is this even a thing, you know? One of the girls, the girl that like, you know, had the bohemian style, she got on the computer and she started replicating the correctional facility like IDs that all of the prisoners had on Orange is the New Black. So she started replicating it. it. Took her a while. So she was still working on it by the time the end of the day came around. So she got them all ready. She printed them out and everything. And she was like showing everybody all of their IDs, right? And the only thing that we needed now was like the mug shots to go onto the IDs, but we weren't gonna do that until we were in our costumes. So that it would be like actual photos of us, right? So she starts showing everybody their IDs and like kind of passing them around. And she was like, you know, all we need to do is take pictures tomorrow when everyone comes in dressed up and then it'll be perfect and it'll look like the real thing. And like, she's super excited, right? And then she comes by and like, she doesn't even look at me. She was like, Nikki, this one's yours. And she just kind of like did one of these. And I was like, oh, okay, great. And you know, I grab it. And I down at it and tell me why it says Dianara. I wasn't trying to be petty. It's the principle of the thing. I said multiple times that I did not want to be no Dianara, okay? I wanted to be Maritza. So I look at it and I play dumb and I was like, oh girl, I was like, I think you gave me somebody else's. And she was like, what? And so she turned back around and I was like, yeah, this one says Dianara on it. Remember I told you I wanted to be Maritza? And she was like, Oh, Nikki, y'all, she played so stupid. Oh, Nikki, I completely forgot that you changed your mind. Do you mind just being Dianara? She was like, because it took me forever to make these and like for me to go back in and change it and reprint it, like it's gonna take forever. And I was like, and so she's saying this in front of everybody and I was like, what do you mean change my mind last minute? No, I did not. Like. All y'all wanted me to be Dianara. All of y'all were doing that since the beginning, since Jump. I wanted to be Maritza. Like, why is this so hard? It wasn't simply because I had to be her. It was because I knew that she was playing dumb. And I knew that for some reason, they all wanted me to be Dianara. But not only, they just, they didn't want me to just be her. They wanted me to be the pregnant version of her. Like, that part right there was so specific and they wanted it so bad. They kept saying it over and over and like they were like all hype about it. And so I felt like I was outnumbered. I felt like I was still new. So, and I also felt like she was putting me in a hard position because she was basically saying like, I'm not gonna redo it because it's gonna take too much time. So like, it is what it is. They ended up ordering like these like jumpsuits on Amazon for all of us. And um, so they sent me home with that. They were like, don't forget, you know, you're the pregnant one. Like you're the pregnant Dianara. Like you gotta come in with your little belly or whatever. Like it'll be so funny. And I was like, okay. So y'all, I went home with that stupid fucking jumpsuit. The next day I go in and i made like a little fake belly and i looked pregnant and you know they were all so happy and we took our mugshot photos to put inside of our ids before any of y'all ask yes i still have the photo and here it is in all of its glory okay look at my face look at my face you could tell i did not want to be there like i did not want to be this character I was not happy at all. Also, for reference, here is the whole group shot of all of us together as the cast of Orange is the New Black. And again, I had that stink face on because I was not feeling, y'all, I was so mad. I was so pissed. <laughs> Fast forward, not even a week later, and you know, work's going on as usual. 
and my HR manager, the lady that had interviewed me in the first place, Linda, she came to me and she told me that she wanted to talk to me like later on during my break. And I was like, oh, okay. So I was kind of nervous because I was like, why? Like, why is this so serious? It was just like out of nowhere. Ended up going to her office and she starts kind of like asking me, you know, how I've liked the position, you know, how I've liked working there so far. Like basically just an update on how things have been going since I had been working there. But she keeps asking me the same questions. Like, do you feel accepted? She was like, you know, we really enjoy having you here, Nikki. And you, like, you're just like a great addition to our team. And just like all this and all that, like she was really, for a lack of better words, like she was really kissing my ass. I hate to put you in this position, Nikki, but I just wanna be completely transparent with you. And I was like, oh, okay. And she was like, we're gonna have a guest come in tomorrow and he's specifically here to speak to you. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. She was like, he's just basically gonna come here and you know, ask you about your time here and you know, how it's been working here with all of us and you just, you know, tell him the truth, that's all. She was just being very elusive, like very general, just like, it's not a big deal, but this guy is gonna come here and he's supposed to talk to you, make sure you're like, you're happy here and I was like, okay so you know this is my boss telling me this so i'm like okay like whatever you need from me like i'm down like that's super weird but okay so the next day comes around i come into work everything's normal and then all of a sudden this guy comes into the office and he's a shorter hispanic guy and he looks really nice and he comes in and he's really sweet and he's like hi you know i'm so and so i have an appointment with linda so he was gonna be meeting with my boss first and I was like, okay, great. So, you know, I told him, go ahead and have a seat. I'll let her know that you're here. And he was like, okay, wonderful. I went back and I let Linda know, hey, so-and-so is here. And you guys immediately, like she came in dressed in this nice ass suit and like she was beyond professional. And she was like, oh, okay, Nikki, thank you so much for letting me know. And I was like, shh sure like I don't know what's going on but okay they go back into the conference room that's behind us right and then fast forward not even five minutes and Linda comes up to me at the desk and she was like hey Nikki you're on and I found that to be an interesting choice of words like this was like some sort of act or like performance like you're on break a leg you know <laughs> make my way to the conference room and literally all of the girls are just staring at me in silence and they're just like following me back and I was like <laughs> I'll call him Ray and so you know he stands up when I go inside the conference room he's so sweet and he was like hi Nikki you know again I'm Ray I met you at the front desk and I was like yeah hi nice to meet you and he was like you know I'm gonna make this quick as possible I definitely don't want to you know take up too much of your time I have a seat and he's really pleasant and he starts asking me questions about my time here in this office and i was like so of course i'm already expecting this because linda told me you know that that was what he was going to be asking about so i'm answering questions and he the questions that he was asking was like do you get along with your co-workers here and you know i was like yeah you know we have a really great you know work environment and we all get along really well and it's just been you know a really good time you know getting to know other girls and he was like okay and then he started asking like do you ever feel out of place and i was like no not really and he goes okay and so everything that i'm saying he's writing down and i was like you guys i started getting really nervous and i was like what is going on here because like literally i would say something and he'd go uh-huh and what else oh okay uh-huh sure 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 i forgot how he worded it but it was something like have you ever felt personally discriminated against for your race any um religious beliefs or your sexual orientation while working here i looked at him and i literally sat there in silence and i just thought to myself and all those moments started coming back into my mind the tamales the deep cleaning the whole you know I'm surprised you don't have three, four kids. All of that started like, you know, replaying in my head and I just kind of sat there. He was like, you know, I just want to know what your experience has been like working here. And I was like, honestly, I was like personally discriminated against. I mean, not really. And he was like, well, what's making you question that? So he starts, you know, asking me, you know, penny for your thoughts pretty much like you know do explain why you feel like they may you may have been discriminated against like 
what situations have happened and I was like you know I was like it's really honestly like harmless things that you know could be misconstrued as you know being racially biased stereotypical comments based on my race like that's pretty much the only thing that I've noticed while working here but it's not anything that made me feel completely outcasted or like you know made me not want to return to work and he was like okay well do tell and so he made me go into deep detail about each event that took place and what was said and all of that and he was writing everything down you guys and I was like oh shit like what is going on and finally I could not take it anymore what is this all about like am I involved in something that I'm not aware of you guys he looked so confused he was like they didn't tell you what this interview was pertaining to and i said no sir they did not y'all let me put on my lipstick and then i'm gonna tell you the tea okay of what's been going on this man started spilling all of the tea i'm currently investigating a claim that was made by a previous employee regarding discrimination here in the workplace and i was like what and he goes yeah she was discriminated against for her race as well as for her sexual orientation and i was like really so he starts opening up he was like we're doing this investigation because we have a latina transgendered woman that was a previous employee here that felt as though she was severely discriminated against because of her sexual orientation and because of her race and she said that she had to go through a lot of um discriminatory statements and stereotypical statements because of those different factors um and so i'm you guys i'm sitting there and i'm like what just asked him i was like when did this happen because you know i was still pretty new it was like a little over a month that i had been working there and he like looked down at his papers and he was like so let's see your hire date was on this date right and i was like yes sir and he goes um so this employee quit and filed this claim a week before they hired you ah uh, it, that makes complete sense. They responded to this claim, you know, they meaning this company. He was like, so their response to this claim was that, you know, this was all false and bogus. Um, and they used your hiring as an example of them being open-minded and not in any way discriminatory based on a person's race. And I straight up, I was like, ah, I was like, now everything makes sense. And he was like, do tell like what do you mean and i was like um I, I did think that i got this job really easily but i just assumed it was because of my credentials and my background um i was like the interview process was really short and quick and you know unlike any other interview process i had ever had um i was like and they hired me on really fast and i was in my desk by the next day i was like i can't help but feel like my onboarding process was expedited because of this investigation and you guys he just sat there and he was like my thoughts exactly wow okay so that's what this was about that's why i was hired on so fast and that's why when linda's ass saw me sitting there applying for this job she looked all excited because i was basically their get out of jail free card like we couldn't possibly have done any of these things and like been discriminatory because look at who we hired and put at the front desk i thought that i was crazy i thought that i may have been overreacting i thought that those little statements here and there from all of them were just like you know little slip ups little stereotypes they didn't mean it like that but for them to have an investigation against them for discrimination because of someone's race and because of their sexual orientation because the person that was here before me was a transgendered female like that makes sense i believe that 100 percent having been in that position and having worked with them and like dodging these like bullets and these jabs and like trying to justify it within my mind. But quite frankly, those types of comments do not belong in the workplace. It's unprofessional and uncalled for. Basically, I was the diversity hire and that exists where like companies wanna show that they're, you know, equal opportunity employers. So they'll hire you based on your race rather than what you bring to the table your education and your background and your experience you know so like it was apparent that i had been hired specifically for this investigation and i was pissed 
I was fucking pissed about it. So I ended up quitting the very next day. I emailed my manager and, you know, gave my resignation effective immediately. I'm not giving two weeks, like no, no, cause y'all had me in the dark about this shit from the jump and y'all knew what the hell y'all were doing. All of them knew about this investigation. So like, it was apparent that they were trying to keep me in the dark about it and I just didn't appreciate it. So I emailed her and I quit. So yeah, girl, I was like a part of some sort of like racial discriminatory investigation. I had no idea. And I thought I was tripping and I really wasn't. And they really were coming from a place of malice because it wasn't just me that felt that way. Let me know your thoughts down below. If those types of little statements would have bothered you, what you would have thought and being in my position, would you have quit? Would you have stayed? Let me know down below. Now let's get on to the winners of the giveaway real fast. Those of you guys that are winners, make sure you DM me on Instagram. Instagram because I have questions to ask you regarding like beanie colors, hoodie sizes, stuff like that before I can send out your shipment, okay? The third winner is Miss Janae Peterson. Yay! Congratulations, Janae. Make sure you DM me on Instagram. I can get all of your info. On to the next. Our second winner is Miss Mara Beauty. Yes! Congratulations, Mara. You are the second winner of the giveaway. I will be sending your goodies, but make sure you DM me on Instagram so I can get your info from you. On to our number one giveaway winner who will be also getting a full conspiracy palette, Jaylin Zamora. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so happy that I was able to have this giveaway for you guys. If you did not win this giveaway, don't worry. There will be so many giveaways coming in the future, I promise. So don't even worry about it. But thank you guys so much for all of you that participated and went over and followed me. have been supporting me and loving me. Thank you guys so, so much. Congratulations to Janae, Mara, and Jaylene. You guys, don't forget to DM me so I can get all of your info and send out your packages. I'm so excited. Congratulations. Thank you guys so much for all of your love and your constant support. Support. I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts down below if you enjoyed this video Give it a big like so I know what's up. If you are not subscribed Make sure you're subscribed hit that notification bell so you're not missing out on any new videos coming here soon I love you guys so so much. I'm a go. I've been filming forever I hope you guys enjoyed this look it was kind of in between this and a nude lip But I feel like I always do nude so <laughs> I love you guys so much and I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Peace